Each year, more than 100 million children worldwide are vaccinated against nearly a dozen preventable diseases like tuberculosis, polio, and measles. The vaccines save an estimated two and a half million lives each year. But shockingly, one in five children around the globe do not receive any type of vaccinations. As a result, the World Health Organization estimates one and a half million children die each year. That's one child every 20 seconds. So in other words, since I've been talking about this, another child has died. And again, all of these deaths are from vaccine-preventable diseases. Now, nearly 200 countries are endorsing a shared vision known as the Decade of Vaccines. The plan is to make vaccines available to every person on the planet by 2020. And the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation is one of the biggest donors to this campaign. But as full-frame contributor Nelly Shudo found out, in the United States, Europe, and Japan, not all parents are concerned about having the right vaccines available for their children. Instead, some are debating whether to vaccinate their children at all. The controversy began in 1998 when a British doctor, Andrew Wakefield, published a study which claimed to find a link between the mercury found in common measles, mumps and rubella vaccines, and autism. The findings alarmed many. It led some, particularly in wealthy countries, to advocate stopping the use of vaccines altogether. The Associated Press has said that immunization rates dropped sharply in the United States and in Britain. In Britain, from 92 to 73 percent, and were as low as 50 percent in some parts of London. In the U.S., the rate did not drop as much, but nearly 125,000 children born in the late 1990s were unvaccinated. As a result, the American CDC, or Center for Disease Control, says that more cases of measles were reported in 2008 than in any year since 1997. In 2011, the British Medical Journal, which had originally published Dr. Wakefield's study, dismissed it. The journal called it fraudulent, saying it had done great damage to public health. In reality, I'm treating the parent more than the child. And yet, Dr. Peter Waldstein, a well-known pediatrician in California, still sees many patients scared of vaccinating their children, fearing they will put them at risk of autism. I've been in private practice over 35 years. Most of my patients come from different socioeconomic uh, regions, areas, neighborhoods. So, you know, we, we try to provide them good medical care. There are patients that absolutely refuse vaccines. Uh, I make them sign a waiver. According to the CDC, one in six children in the United States has a developmental disability. Many parents believe there is a direct link between a preservative called thimerosal in vaccinations and the increase in developmental disorders like autism. Thimerosal is a mercury preservative that they used to put in vaccines. Today's vaccines do not contain thimerosal, aluminum, or any additives that I know that would be detrimental to a child's health. Try. Okay, go get them. Many researchers believe the rise in cases of autism is better explained by growing awareness and increasing acceptance. I don't think we're seeing more cases of autism or ADHD. I think that the awareness is more uh, evident. Hi, Rob Schneider in The Chosen One. Comedian Rob Schneider is a parent who takes his stance against forced vaccinations very seriously. Unfortunately, um, the injuries are real. I mean, whether um, the government admits or says that autism uh, is caused by vaccines or not. The fact is, the matter is that vaccines can cause brain inflammation. Schneider says that he has not vaccinated his young child, but among entertainers, he is not alone. Jenny McCarthy, a host on a popular TV talk show, is a vocal critic of vaccines. She believes her son, Evan, 
developed autism because he received vaccines as an infant. Many doctors, however, see avoiding vaccines as a health hazard for children. I personally think this is foolish, and I think that you're going to see a resurgence of, of different diseases like pertussis, meningitis, even polio. The parents against vaccinations refuse to believe the rise of infectious diseases is directly linked to refusing inoculations. For instance, in the state of Washington, 77% of the kids who came down with a whooping cough were completely vaccinated, up-to-date um, uh, kids who were, you know, who had the vaccination. So it is not a perfect science. So, uh, you know, people need that choice. In the Laurel Canyon neighborhood of Los Angeles, other parents agree. Some, however, fear speaking. One mother told me she did not want to be interviewed because she feared her point of view would keep her children from being invited to their friends' homes or accepted into certain private schools. The family told me they have already faced backlash against their decision not to vaccinate. They were asked to leave their pediatrician's practice for refusing vaccines after their child had a bad reaction to one. Some doctors say unvaccinated children pose a risk to other patients. 16 years after Dr. Wakefield's study in Britain first sparked fears about the MMR vaccine, some parents still struggle for answers. The rise in diagnosed cases of autism and autism spectrum disorders defies explanation. Doctors and parents alike are demanding more research. I, I don't have any link between autism and vaccines because, I mean, I've been doing this for so long, I wouldn't be giving kids vaccines, you know, that I saw a cause and effect. Uh, I have seen no, you know, adverse reactions uh, causing autism whatsoever from these vaccines. My advice to the parents who are deciding to vaccinate or not to vaccinate, I would uh, ask them to go to the National Vaccine Information Center, educate yourself, and ask your doctor questions. And I think that the parents are already asking these questions.